With the level of violence in our world today, it's really a necessity to learn how to treat a shock or a trauma, and homeopathy is a perfect tool to do that with. Think of all the shootings today. The people that lived are in a certain traumatic mental state, and if that's not treated, it can lead to disease because it's so much stress on the body, it puts the body way out of balance because of that level of stress that's in our pressure cooker now. And in addition, they have the grief of losing people they knew in the shooting, which is an additional load of stress to their body. The Vidal Speaks Podcast. Episode number 33 is a me-speak, treating shock and injury with homeopathy. Welcome to Vidal Speaks. My name is Deborah Vidal, former 11-year LPGA golf pro turned classical homeopath, certified plant-based nutritionist, and wellness coach. Each week here on Vidal Speaks, we bring you knowledge inspiration, or natural remedies to help you take charge of your health and feel your best. I believe health is freedom and knowledge is power, so tuning in each week will give you the power to take steps towards freeing yourself from the chains that hold you back from having the energy to do all you want in life. No matter where you are in your journey of wellness, Vidal Speaks can help. I promise. Hi there, my global podcast friends. I'm happy to be back with you today. I hope you're having a good week. Did you get a few sessions in of sound healings this week? Music is really a great mechanism to escape, even if it's rock and roll or the oldies or whatever it is you love. When I play music, I already know I'm in a place where I don't have to focus too much and I can relax a bit, like when I cook. I love to cook when I can plan out what I will make, and I know I have time to take my time to make a yummy vegan dish filled with love. That's when the music rocks in my house. Then there is the podcast moments. I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving in traffic, which is not that often because I mostly ride my Vespa scooter around town, or sometimes I ride my Ducati motorcycle. But I do like to listen to a podcast versus, say, the radio. Also, when I drive to Las Vegas to go visit my dad, I do one podcast after another. It's like the podcast marathon. Anyways, I like podcasting, and I think it's going to become really huge one day. It's growing like crazy. One thing I love about this show is all my options. I can interview anybody because health covers so much territory, from food to diet to exercise to de-stressing to mental-emotional ways we can heal There's so many things to learn about being healthier and enriching our lives, and there's so much great info out there in the world today. That's one reason why I love technology. Look how impossible this would have been to do even 10 years ago. The other side of technology, though, that's bad is that it's cutting us all off from each other and no one connects in person anymore. I think this is sad because we're giving up something very important in life, which means we really should be connecting and interacting with those that we feel touched by or stimulated by. Life just seems to get in the way, doesn't it? We're living in the fast lane, and some days you just have to say, stop and take me to that place in nature or help me listen to something that just helps me chill out. Today, I'm going to do the show all by myself. That's why I'm calling it a me-speak. Why do you want to do that, you may ask? Well, because I always have so much to say. (laughs) You know, you can ask anybody that knows me. I'm never short on having something to say. When I do interviews, I only get to teach you things via the interview or via my intro and outro. But my plans all along have been to give you more than that from what I know, from my clinical practice and my life experience of helping others. I learned so many things because I had to experience it myself or my patients had it. And in the end, I had to learn how to help myself through it or my patients through it. Lloyd's been a big teacher for me too. I never met anyone like Lloyd in many ways. He's such a character. 
but I mean the state of his stomach health is what makes him a good teacher for me. Geez, I used every piece of information I knew, every single thing I had in my cells trying to help him, and nothing worked. It just made me keep learning, keep trying, keep searching, until finally we figured out how to get him better. Finally. It's been a long journey because I had to learn it all from scratch through trial and error. But all of those things that didn't work and all the things that did work, I wouldn't have known unless I tried. You can't just speak just because you've read something. When you do a show on health, you have to have clinical experience, in my opinion. So then you know what works for many people and what doesn't. I was lucky to have a practice because my patients taught me so much. Trial and error is painful, but the way to help people is to be open and never give up. But honestly, I believe that the body is a really powerful, energetic being, and it knows how to heal itself. Sometimes it's just blocked and it needs some help. I learned that most times it needs well-prescribed homeopathic remedies, lots of detox, lots of lifestyle changes, huge dietary changes, tons of rest, and an optimistic mind that the process is possible. And when you start from square one, it seems overwhelming. So when you listen and learn from someone that has used things with success over many patients, then you save yourself a lot of pain, suffering, time, and money, of course. That's why I want to do a bunch of episodes with me alone, just me and you. Yes, just me and you guys. You know, that feeling like we're sitting around my table over a great Ticino detox herbal drink with some homemade cashew milk in it, and then we just chat over all kinds of important issues that can improve our quality of life. Doesn't that sound fun? By the way, I always want you guys to feel part of the show. It's us talking and you asking questions. I try to speak with the idea that you're going to have these questions along the way. And I hope by the end of the show, I've answered all of them. But in case I don't, you know that anytime you want to, you can feel free to email me. Really, you guys, email me, contact at VidalSpeaks.com. And just let me know how you enjoy it, what you'd like to hear, what you didn't understand. Whatever you need to know, shoot me an email. I promise I'll reply. So today I want to speak to you about treating shocks and trauma or injuries and what you can do to get through these times, but more than that, how important it is to get on the treatment protocol as soon as you can after one of these happens. A shock and an injury are two different things, and they require both very different treatments homeopathically, but I didn't really want to separate them because they often go together, meaning that when you receive a bad injury, Often you're in shock too. Sometimes you can receive a shock, but not an injury. For example, when you get bad news that someone has been killed, or that your test came back that you're positive for cancer, or maybe you just witnessed a horrible event in life like someone getting killed. With the level of violence in our world today, it's really a necessity to learn how to treat a shock or a trauma, and homeopathy is a perfect tool to do that with. Think of all the shootings today. The people that lived are in a certain traumatic mental state, and if that's not treated, it can lead to disease because it's so much stress on the body. It puts the body way out of balance because of that level of stress that's in our pressure cooker now. And in addition, they have the grief of losing people they knew in the shooting, which is an additional load of stress to their body. I think you can see why it's important to get treated as soon as possible after a shock. Also, everyone reacts differently to a shock, and that's why there's a number of remedies in homeopathy that deal with this level of shock. Injuries and trauma are from many causes. Could be a car accident, which may have both shock and injury, or maybe it's from surgery, which is for sure a trauma to the body to be cut and treated like that. Or maybe you came off your motorcycle like Lloyd did at 150 miles an hour going around a corner. Yikes. Anyway, let's start with shock. There's a book in homeopathy called A Repertory. It's a huge book that's divided into sections for each part of the body, but it also has a section for the mind, 
one for dreams, fever, perspiration, chills, stuff like that. We use the repertory to look up symptoms, and when we choose a symptom, it'll list the remedies known for that symptom. When we find a symptom in this book, we call that a rubric. So in other words, I go into my repertory and I search for rubrics that have to do with shock. I find ones like this. Mind, ailments from mental shock. Mind, ailments from fright. Generals, shock after injuries. Head, shocks, electric-like. Generals, shock. So I think you get the idea. There'll be about a 100 remedies you will find in these rubrics. But once you're trained in homeopathy, you'll learn to know how they're all different or how they react different to shock. Today, I want to just keep it simple and teach you three remedies for shock. Aconite, opium, and gelsemium. So let's get started and talk about these remedies and how they're different and what scenarios you may use them in because shock is so important to treat ASAP. Okay, first, aconite. A good key word for aconite is sudden. Sudden fright or shock. Now, it's really helpful to learn a remedy with just a few key ideas that form kind of an essence of the remedy. So the essence of aconite in a shock is any near-death experience. They feel they're going to die. They can't sleep because they fear they will die if they go to sleep. Their mind plays the shock over and over in their head like a tape that won't stop. They feel like they're going to have a panic attack. Aconite's a great homeopathic volume in shock situations. And lastly, they have extreme restlessness with a fear of death and dying. So there's thousands of rubrics or symptoms in all big remedies in homeopathy, but you don't have to have them all because a shock is an acute state and you just want to understand the basic essence of the remedy. So in this situation, you just need to make sure that the essence of aconite matches the state of the person that's in shock, and then it will work. So a little bit about dosing. When you dose in acute states like this, especially when it's an acute shock, you want to dose with high potencies if you have them, like 10M. But if you don't have 10M, then use 1M. If you don't have 1M, use 200. You don't have 200, use 30C. But if you only have 30C, then just dump a bunch of pellets in a glass, like 10 pellets in four ounces of water, and then just take a dose, stir it around, and take a dose every 15 minutes until you see some change. So let me tell you a little story about aconite. Once I was at the golf course, and this caddy was stepping on a stool to get something off the top of the Coke machine, and the stool broke, and he slipped down, and he grabbed the side of the Coke machine. It was like a grate. He put his fingers in the grate to hold on, but the grate was really sharp and it cut four of his fingers off. It was early in the morning and all there were, the club there were a bunch of men that were all freaked out about all the blood. So I came to the rescue and he was laying on the ground with blood everywhere. At first I thought he'd only lost one finger, so I was just holding his hand up and I was putting a tourniquet around his arm while they were calling 911. In the end, I realized that he had lost four fingers, so we ended up putting a tourniquet around all four of his fingers. Anyway, I wasn't in shock at all at the time. I was just doing what I needed to do in an emergency like that. And once the day was over and I was not busy anymore and my mind had a chance to think, I started seeing the scenario over and over and over in my head. It was just horrible. I couldn't even hardly make it home. I felt so bad for him. And I truly realized I was in shock. I walked in the door and I took a dose of aconite 10M. And I promise you, in 10 minutes, the tape in my head stopped playing. Of course, I still felt so much sympathy for him. But that movie of going over and over in my head just stopped. It was like a miracle to me. So that's the feeling of aconite. Opium. Opium is made from the poppy, as you may expect. Sadly, this remedy you won't be able to buy in America because they need you to have a prescription, but you can order it online from many pharmacies in Europe like Helios.com in England. 
You may have to email them as sometimes they sell it only when you email them, but it's a great one to have on hand. The shock of opium is very different to aconite. These are symptoms that require opium as a remedy. Lack of reaction to a shock, kind of a complete paralyzing fright after they've seen some horrible accident. Convulsions after a shock or epilepsy after a shock. Paralysis after a shock. They withdraw into their inner world and they have this feeling of painlessness of normally painful conditions, meaning that it's something that should be very painful, but they feel nothing. And the last thing about opium is they're kind of in this dull delirium or they're in a state of stupor. Again, the dosing's the same, as I said. High potencies like 1M or 10M is best. Otherwise, just use what you have and do it a lot more frequently. But even if you have the high ones, you're going to be doing it probably every hour or so, maybe for the first couple days, maybe every two to three hours. And then let me tell you a little story so you get the feeling of opium. I had this patient and she lost the ability to speak after she was in a traumatic accident. She was so withdrawn and she had this certain dullness to her. And it was very clear to me when I took her family history and listened to her story from her mother that this loss of her speech was because of the shock of this accident. So I gave her opium and it really helped her recover her speech. And she came back to her own world. Really, when you see cases like this happen, it's truly a miracle. That's what I love so much about homeopathy and it made my practice so worthwhile. Getting one person better, just healing one person in the world makes you feel so good. So that's opium. The last remedy for shock is called gelsemium. Gelsemium is made from yellow jasmine. The main acute essence of gelsemium is like this. They have ailments from bad news. This is one of the main remedies for this symptom, meaning like you get a call and you're given some bad news and you're never well after that. They have this horrible trembling from fear. They're very anxious. Their legs go weak or heavy, but the trembling is very prominent in gelsemium. There's kind of an exhaustion from the shock. They have a fear that their heart will stop. A little bit that's similar to aconite, isn't it? And there's a sense of heaviness in the body, and they feel like they can't move. It's either heaviness in their eyes or heaviness in their legs, in my experience. And they always have this dread to do anything, so it's not just the shock. You'll see the dread in anything, like dread to go to the dentist or whatever, but since we're talking about shock today, you'll notice that they have a dread. And lastly, you'll see a lot of headaches with gelsemium after their shock. So a story about gelsemium, so you can get a picture of it, is when my friend Ellen's dad died suddenly, she was telling me that she was in the train and her legs were feeling like 100 pounds. I remember her head and her eyes were heavy and she just said she felt paralyzed in so many ways. This is the great state of gelsemium and gelsemium helped her through the grief a lot. I've given gelsemium many times in shock, especially in cases when a person gets told something sudden and some very bad news and then they can't stop trembling. Their legs go weak or heavy and the trembling is nonstop. It's a great remedy for so many things but it's a must one to have for shocks. Okay, I imagine you need a little break right now, so walk around and relax that brain for a minute. Get a drink. I know it may seem like a lot to remember, but don't panic. Just check out the show notes and you'll see it's all there. And you can follow that timestamp now in my show notes to re-listen at any time to a very specific point. Now, I just want to take a minute to thank you all for using that Amazon banner on my website, and I want to remind you to check out the show notes because there's a new review box there. All you have to do is just click on that review icon, and it will open the review page in iTunes directly. I can't make it any easier than that, so please let me know if it works because I've had so many people saying they're trying and they just can't figure it out. Okay, you guys ready to get back to learn how to treat your injuries now? 
Here we go. So now about traumas or injuries. As I said before, injuries often have a component of shock to them most often. So in most injury cases, I always administer the shock remedy first. And then even if it's just a few minutes later, I begin the injury remedy. It really depends on the situation. Sometimes you just have to do one remedy and then the other because you don't have time. It's really an emergency. If that's the case, then you can just alternate as you need to. Injuries are so varied, so it's harder to be real specific here because in an accident, we can have head injuries or a limb amputation, or you can have serious nerve pains like crushed limbs or crushed fingers. Then you can have burns, hemorrhages, and they'd all need very specific remedies but I want to teach you three remedies that I'll just cover about as much ground as possible for you without making it too complicated. Again, dosing is going to be the same as I mentioned before. If you have the high potencies, use those. And if you don't, just take the low ones and take them more frequently. So now some of the rubrics that we'd use for injuries would be something like this. Mind, ailments from injuries or accidents meaning that the person would have some kind of mental symptom after an injury or an accident. Next, mind, confusion of mind after injury to the head. Mind, dullness after injury to the head. Generalities, shock after injuries. Generals, injuries from operations. Generals, injuries after a concussion. Generals, hemorrhage from injuries. Generals, paralysis on one side after a shock. So do you get the idea? The remedies that are in these rubrics would all be good injury remedies. Okay, the three remedies I want to teach you for injury are Arnica, Hypericum, and Natrum Sulfuricum. So before we start, I want to be sure to tell all of you guys one thing that's extremely important in the case of an accident or an injury you need to call 911 right away. Do not, please do not think that I'm advocating to just do homeopathy. It's important to get medical care in almost every injury case, but there's so much you can do to help the person before the medical care gets there. So you do everything possible first with homeopathic remedies while you're waiting for them to show up. Often I found that the medical treatment didn't work and the pain was not manageable by what they gave them. So sometimes it's the actual remedy that worked and sometimes they work side by side. But be smart and just call 911 and give the remedy while you're waiting for them to get there. So let's start with Arnica. The official name is Arnica Montana. Arnica is the most well-known homeopathic remedy in the world. Maybe all of you have heard of it already, and if you haven't, after today, you better go order some and keep it in your purse or your car, along with aconite. When I learned Arnica, I learned it as the blood sponge. So get that picture. Remember that, because anytime you have blood or a hemorrhage, whether it's from a stroke or an accident, Arnica is the first thing you want to grab when you call 911. As you can imagine, most injuries lead to some kind of bleeding or hemorrhaging. So Arnica is the main remedy needed in almost every case first. Whether it's bruises or deep bleeding in the organs, Arnica is a must. By the way, Arnica is also good in shock, so it covers both. And hence, it's the most important remedy to learn and remember today. So here's the essence of Arnica. Pain, pain, pain. Crushing pains, sore pains, bleeding, hemorrhaging, bruised or sore pains. Sends the doctor away saying that they are okay. I love that one, but it's true that's really in our book because a lot of things were written back in the 1700s. But what that means is it's very common for Arnica when people come to them and say, Are you okay? Let me take you to the hospital. They'll always go, no, 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 I don't need any help. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. And they're practically bleeding to death. So that's the symptom. So the next symptom of the essence is, it's the first remedy always to think of in any injury. 
and it's a great remedy to give immediately after the trauma of a surgery. And lastly, Arnica is worse by touch, meaning they're aggravated and don't want to be touched. Now I'd like to tell you a little story because I just think it brings the remedy to life. Well, Lloyd was practicing at the racetrack and he's never ever crashed or gone down on his bike. He's been hit by cars on his bicycle, but he's never gone down on his bike. So I've seen him race and practice at the track many, many times and I just never ever ever think that he's going to come off. And one day, instead of watching him, I walked over to the coffee shop just to plug in my computer. And suddenly when I was in there, this guy comes in and he says, now don't panic, but I just need to tell you that Lloyd went down. And I'm like, what? What? I was like so in shock. I mean, what state is that, you guys? That's like the aconite state. It was such an, a sudden acute thing that aconite was really what I should have taken. But instead, of course, I went running out and Lloyd's, you know, they wear those whole full leathers and it was all like beat up, but he was actually amazingly well. He slid about 150 feet holding his head up off the ground because he has his neck fused and he was worried about that as he was sliding. In the end, he had this elbow that was pretty beat up. But the biggest thing was he had a horrible headache. So we started packing up the truck, and that took a while. A bunch of his friends came over, and about an hour went by before we were packed up and ready to go. And Lloyd said, I'm okay, just let me drive home. And I said, no, 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 let me drive home. You need to just sit and relax. He's like, no, 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 I'm okay. Really, I'm okay. I'm okay. See what I mean? It's like sends the doctor away, right? But he convinced me that he was okay. So I finally just gave in and let him drive. Well, less than a mile down on the road, while he's driving, he fainted. And I had to take control of the car and pull it over to the side and actually give him like mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. It was so scary, you guys, I can't even tell you. By the time we got home, which was about an hour and 20 minutes away, he had a horrible headache. He was looking kind of green, wasn't feeling too well. And he laid down on the bed. I ran downstairs. Sadly, I didn't have my kit with me. I was so angry because I usually take it. But I ran downstairs to my office and I got a 10M Arnica and I started giving it to him like every 15 minutes. After a couple doses, he fell immediately asleep and he stayed asleep for about an hour and a half. And when he woke up, he said to me, what time's that concert tonight? Because we had tickets to go see this concert. I said, are you kidding me? He's like, no, I feel fine. My head's fine. I don't have a headache. My elbow doesn't hurt anymore. I'm good. And I went, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So anyway, he was better. And then I was the one that was in shock because shock can happen sometimes many hours later once you've dealt with the trauma. So we ended up going to the concert at least for about an hour. It was amazing. And I ended up coming home, staying home from work the next day and taking Aconite 10M because I was in shock. And by the next morning, we were both healed. But what an experience, I'll tell you. Never let anybody tell you they're okay when you don't think they're okay. That's the story of Arnica. The next remedy is Hypericum. The official name is Hypericum perforatum. The key word of this remedy is nerve injury, especially the nerves in the fingers, toes, spine, and teeth. The essence of Hypericum is smashed fingers, violent shooting pains of the nerves, spinal nerve pains, neuralgia of a stump, you know, like post-amputation or phantom pains after amputation, and injury to a tailbone. So let me give you a little story about Hypericum so I can bring it to life for you. Once my cousin Anne, who had these horrible pains in her teeth because she had just come from a dentist, and he was giving her some kind of allopathic medication. I think it was some kind of opioid or something because the pain was bad. And she happened to be at my parents' house because it was Christmas time, and she was telling me how bad her toothache was. So I said, well, let's do a remedy. If the drug's not helping you, just take a remedy tonight. You should be fine. 
I went into my dad's homeopathic kit and I got her Hypericum 200C. Well, when she woke up in the morning, she said, amazing. I can't believe it. My pain is completely gone. See, sometimes the pain is handled better by the remedy than actually an opioid drug. Can you believe that? But it's really true. And also, I just need to tell you that I've used Hypericum a lot, probably five or six times in my practice with people that had tailbone injuries, like they slipped on ice and landed on their tailbone, or kids that were jumping or playing and fell and landed on their tailbone. It's a great remedy for those nerves that come out of the spine like that. And for some patients, it's really good for their sciatica pain. Not all of them, but it's worth a try. Hypericum, just remember the key word is nerve pain and nerve injury and nerve pains after an injury. Okay, and the last remedy for trauma or injuries is natrium sulfuricum. And the short version of this remedy is called nat sulf. The essence of nat sulf is that they're never well since head injury, which means they have these long-lasting headaches or just kind of dizziness or anything in their head after some injury. And even if it's many years later, like even in my case, you know, I had that horrible injury when I was 11, and then I was left with those terrible headaches ever since. So for 30 years later, I had these headaches. And when I went to my first homeopath, that was one of the first remedies they gave me. So it really doesn't matter how many years after. It just matters that you have never been well since a head injury. The next really important symptom of the essence is any trauma to the head. And usually, nat self follows arnica because nat self is a deeper treatment. Arnica is kind of more superficial unless there's bleeding. But the injury to the head needs nat self. So as I said, lots of headaches. They're also very sensitive to the sun. They have suicidal thoughts and they're suicidal from pains. They can have vertigo, tinnitus, or epilepsy and convulsions after an injury to the head. They also can have a change of mood. You'll notice maybe they used to be a happy person and now they've become depressive and dark. That's very much the picture of Nat Sulf. So there's a guy at the golf course that recently got hit in the head with a ball. Someone sculled a shot from about 50, 60 yards away and hit him right in the top of the forehead. So they took him to the hospital because he was immediately dizzy and kind of had a headache. And now it's been a few months and he's really in trouble. He was telling me the other day that he can't sleep at night. He's got these horrible headaches. He's dizzy all the time. He's taking Tylenol all day and the doctors are telling him he can't take that because his liver is going to go bad. They've given him other drugs. It's not helping him. So I didn't know that he was having problems until he told me that. So I said, well, let me bring you a remedy. So I took him some nat sulf. I think I gave him one M and I had him take few doses a day for like a week. Well, next time I saw him a couple weeks later, first he told me, every time I take that remedy, I just go to sleep. Yeah, because that's what the body needs to do often when it heals. You need to sleep to get better. So I told him that's a good sign. And then he still was kind of up and down and I made him some more of the remedy and I told him to continue taking it. And then just, I don't know, it was probably a week ago, I just gave him Arnica 10M because I feel like he still needs something in addition. It's not perfect yet, but he said, Deb, I'm so much better. It's amazing. Been to five, six doctors and nobody's been able to help me. And now it's really better. So thank you. So that's kind of the story of Nat Sulf. There's a lot of people like Lloyd who had a horrible injury when he was hit by that car and severed his aorta. He's had a lot of chronic headaches since that accident. So I'm beginning to do a series with him on this remedy right now to try to clear that out of him. So that's the story of Nat Sulf. They're kind of never well since a head injury. That's what you need to remember. And also the kind of aggravated from sun and a little bit darker depressive mood. Well, do you guys think that was too much? I tried to keep it simple to just a few remedies for each of those categories because I want you to be able to remember it in case you need to use them. 
Normally, I like to do only one ailment at a time, but shock and injury, they go hand in hand, and it only made sense to do them together today. And also, it's important to know what to treat and what not to treat. But really, to me, it's always about treating while you call for help and keep treating until help gets there. And then when you're in the hospital, keep treating along with the allopathic care. Then you get the best of both worlds. Healing happens faster. Surgeries heal better. They have less complications. Emotional recoveries are easier. So it only can help to give homeopathic remedies in situations of shocks or trauma. One thing to know when you're treating acutes, though, is that you don't have to worry anymore about aggravations because the body's already in such a heightened state that you just need to dose high and frequent. Also, it's a good idea to have a kit at home. I'd suggest first to get a 30C kit. If you can afford it eventually, then you can get a second one that's 200C. I like the compact ones that I have from Natural Health Pharmacy in New Mexico, so check them out. Okay, you guys, I hope you never, ever have to use what I taught you today. But if you do, I guarantee you, you're more prepared from this episode than 90% of the population. Really, just knowing how and when to use aconite and arnica is worth a million bucks. So put that one in your wellness toolbox, okay? I sure hope you enjoyed the Me Speaks episode today, my podcast family. Now, you know what time it is, right? It's time to say goodbye. Vidal has spoken. Remember, you heal with a plant-powered diet, homeopathy, and detoxing, of course. Peace. Be healthy. Be free. Live life.